Hey hey people, Nano Kekka here and welcome to a new installment of Super Robot Wars Pitfalls, where I clear up misconceptions in the mecha fandom. In these videos, I discuss common tips given by Super Robot Wars fans that might seem like good ideas, but actually make things harder for yourself. But first, please remember to click like and donate to my Patreon for more high quality New Type Republic related content. With that out of the way, Let's begin. It's time to talk about SRWA Portable. The game has a reputation of supposedly being extremely difficult, though I would consider that statement to be a very relative one. There's a lot of angles to tackle the subject on exactly how you can make the game less stressful on yourself, so why don't we start at the beginning? Literally, with my suggestion on exactly which main character unit you should pick. In 2021, I probably don't have to tell you which main character to choose in order to have the easier time hint it's the one without the chest missiles. So let's just discuss the robots instead. Today I have brought a very special guest with me to introduce said misconception. Why don't you say hello to the viewers? Hello everyone, I'm a fairly new player to the SRW series, my name is Matthew Marn 420 Blaze It. I only played SRWW and T and I really like both of them actually and I'm really excited for the new SRW stream coming up. So Matthew, you tried out SRWAP recently, didn't you? Yes so while I was waiting I tried playing AP because I'm a huge Axel fan from Endless Frontier and he's like super cool so I put him in the Visaga because ninjas are super cool and Visaga is the strongest unit anyway because supers are better than reals. Well I can't say I'm surprised by your answer, but unfortunately you have fallen into an SRW pitfall. Basically today's pitfall is, not using Ash Saber as your starting unit. Why is Ash Saber the best starting unit for beginners, you ask? Well, that's what I'm here to talk about today. Here are the many factors as to why you should pick Ash Saber. Survivability Now a common misconception is that real robots are bad in AP because of the new evasion decay mechanic introduced in this very game. This couldn't be further from the truth as it is still possible to raise your evasion to the point where you still cannot be hit by any practical means. It's not easy to see, but Ash Saber is quite possibly the most survivable starter unit, which might feel strange since it gives off the impression of a fragile reel. This is due to the Ash Saber's base 120 mobility, which is practically end game tier, equal to units like the new Gundam. It's not uncommon to find the Ash Saber is unhittable by many units even without upgrades or spirits, but in case you want an insurance policy, this is where Axel's Fortitude comes in. Most of the time, Fortitude is given to supers, who cannot dodge effectively as a general rule, making it interchangeable with Flash as a spirit. However, when Fortitude is given to a unit that can dodge reliably, a single casting can last a very long time only being used up when the target is finally hit and resetting the evasion decay. It is a power defensive synergy that is only found on a small amount of units in the game, which generally have other weaknesses. However, the Ash Saber does not share those weaknesses, making it a much more effective tactic here. Now, some of you might be saying, Nano Kekka, wouldn't the Visago be more survivable, as it is a super with a built-in bunshin? Generally considered to be one of the most broken defensive abilities in the game? As it turns out, the early game is rather rough for the old ninja bot. For one thing, Bunshin only kicks in at 130 morale, and morale is much more difficult to earn in the early stages of the game before enough investment has been put into the unit. Without this ability, the Visaga actually has the weakest defensive stats being bitten by even the Lay's Angriff. Now by all means, if you're playing a new game plus, then the Visaga has many advantages that really benefit from your monetary focus, but before then, choose the Ash Saber. Superior Movement and Range While the Ash Saber cannot fly, a trait shared only by the other selectable reel, it uniquely starts with a base 8 movement. In SRWAP, Movement ranges are fairly standard, 
with slow units having 5 or 6 move and the fast ones having 7 or 8. As you may notice, a lot of the early game tends to involve having to outrun units, whether it's fleeing enemies or outpacing allies with no self-preservation sense. Having a strong 8 move unit makes the early game much more doable compared to having everyone footed at 5 squares per turn. Now, some of you may put a high value on flight and thus prefer the V-Saga, which does come with that feature inbuilt. However, look at it this way. If you slap a flight module on the Ash Saber, you'll have a unit with 8 movement and S ranks in air, with 2 parts slot left. However, to achieve the same 8 move and S rank for the V-Saga, you would need both a move boosting item and a flight module leaving you with one slot, so in this regards. The Ash Saber comes out on top by having superior item flexibility. Now, a possible counterpoint is that if you intend to use a lot of ground units then the availability of flight units is an issue as there will be unfortunate competition. However I do believe the Ash Saber's early game power makes up for it, and if push comes to shove, you can also AFUB the Ash Saber to give it flight, but unfortunately only an A rank in air. As an additional perk, when Ash Saber finally unlocks its finisher, the Sword Breakers. Well, these guys are essentially post-movement funnels, with a whooping max range of 6 tiles. That means that at any point the Ash Saber has an effective reach of 14 tiles, making him the perfect unit for catching any strays, while your main army can push forward. Size does matter. Yes boys and girls. Unlike what your guardian force told you, Ash Saber is the better unit, as it is M-sized compared to the v saga L size. Anyway clever in you endo. <laughs> now remember that this is supposed to be an Ash Saber versus v saga thing, so wouldn't you think, isn't being bigger better, as a size advantage gives you more damage and a damage reduction, one of the most important elements in SRW? As it turns out, because AP uses the OG engine, size does not affect damage in any form. Smaller units do not take extra damage from bigger ones, nor does the reverse apply. The Ash Saber's slightly lower base damage numbers are thus less of an issue than it initially seems. Therefore, smaller units are better, because all else being equal, they have a higher chance to dodge than their bigger counterparts. Going back to what we said about the Lay's Angriff and the Visaga defensive capabilities, as the former has the bigger numbers in its defensive stats. It is thus more survivable despite its smaller size. The Ash Saber's advantage, on the other hand, is piling a high mobility number on its smaller frame. The Visaga attempts to be a hybrid defense unit that relies on both tanking and dodging to mitigate damage but it is not that effective at either without a major resource investment. And each mobility investment pays off less than the equivalent on the Ash Saber. Yet the Ash Saber comes fully developed even without a single point in the mobility stat, which significantly improves your financial situation at the start of the game. With the money saved, you can have two good units instead of just one, significantly improving your early game especially in a cash-starved game as AP. This sums it up for part 2 of the SRW Pitfall series. The next time you play AP, consider trying out the Ash Saber instead of going with the supposed meta choice. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please spread it to any newbies trying to get into the SRW series or even experienced players trying to improve their playstyle. Thank you and I'll see you next time for more SRW pitfalls.